Hi, this is Pat with Code Academy. I'm a web developer based in Washington, DC. I've been teaching coding for over six years now and a very common question that I get with a lot of students is, what programming language should I learn? Or what language is right for me? This is a big topic and I don't know that anyone can really answer it adequately in under 10 minutes, but we're gonna give it a try. There are a lot of answers out there trying to answer this question and if you're new to programming, it can be very confusing to try to wade through it all. You might be worried about this and that's okay. Part of the problem is that our industry changes so fast. This video can't answer all of those questions for you, but what we are gonna do is take a stab at the following points. Give you some high level guidance based on what are some of the most common paths that people take, clear up some misconceptions, and give you the tools to go out and find the right answer for you. I can't promise you'll have the answer by the end of this video, but I can promise you that you will be closer than when you started. Let's get going. Okay, so what is a programming language? Computers are machines that give data outputs based on data inputs. They're really great at this, and they can give you millions of outputs per second. They are serenely undaunted by complexity. The problem is that computers do not think like humans do. It's really hard for us to talk to them. Programmers are like the ambassadors between the two worlds. We use programming languages to give computers sets of instructions in a way that both parties can understand. And at the end of the day, a computer only understands binary, meaning the ones and zeros. So no matter what the programming language is, it must eventually compile down to binary. The closer to a computer's native tongue, binary, the faster the language, because there's not as much need for translation. But it's also a lot harder to program at that level. Now here, there are two major distinctions in programming languages. Some languages are closer to how computers communicate, referred to as low level. Some, however, are closer to the way that you and I would converse, and those are called high level languages. There are pros and cons to each. So for low level languages, they're easy for computers to understand and super fast to run, but they're very difficult for humans to learn and understand what's happening. High level languages are easy for humans to learn, use and debug, but slower for computers because they have to go through multiple translation cycles to eventually get into something that a computer knows what to do with. And it's not just us, computers really struggle to understand humans too. Uh, fun fact, there's a whole field called natural language processing that's trying to crack this. Programming languages at the end of the day are all just different ways of telling computers what to do and they're usually designed with different philosophies or different approaches to how to build stuff in mind. High versus low is more of a spectrum than a black and white sort of thing. When I say high level is slower, I'm talking about fractions of seconds, milliseconds really. And there's relatively few tasks where those milliseconds are so important because humans are so much slower, we just don't notice. But when those tasks pile up, they become noticeable to us humans. Ever gotten mad at your computer because it was taking too long to load? College computer science degrees don't usually focus on high level. They focus on low level languages as the foundation. Boot camps like the one I taught at are there to just teach you the high level things you need to get a job. And nope, you don't need a computer science degree to do programming or to get a job as a developer. But yes, knowing more about how a computer works and computer science can help with high level users long term. For now, just know that for most tasks and most jobs, high level will do the trick. That brings us to the big question. Which programming language should you choose? Well, because programming languages are tools to talk to computers, it's not just about what's best for the computer, but what's best for you and why the computer are you gonna be working together. So what we should really ask is, what are you doing? Are you programming for fun? Are you just curious? Do you want the easiest language under your belt? Uh, a particular project that you're working on? Are you, are you trying to get a programming job? Or are you trying to apply these skills to your current job? Maybe you're not sure. Truth is, is that there are different right languages for each of these answers to these questions. Now, for a few of them, like for fun, you could just pick any language you like and dabble and see what you can do. Some of the common choices here are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, in that order, to build websites and or Python to build almost anything. If you're just curious, similar story for the fun crowd, but maybe you should drill into why you're curious. If these cover you, great. Come back to this video later. Beyond that, this gets real complicated real fast, so buckle up. Now, the easiest language is quick to ask, but long to answer. 
What's easy depends on what you use it for. So, for example, a hammer is easy to use to drive nails and requires less skill than using a saw, but try cutting a tree down with a hammer. Languages are tools and were created to handle specific tasks. So, as a general rule, some tasks will be easier to learn to program than others. HTML is quote-unquote easy, but it won't help you with data analysis. Now, if you want to build a project or get a specific job done, it matters what kind of project you're doing. Is it a website? Is it an application? What are you trying to build with this project? Now, if you want to apply your programming skills to your current role, that comes with its own bag of questions too, like what job are you in? Uh, Marketing needs are going to be different than the financial analysts. What industry? What sorts of tasks are you doing? Uh, What kind of technology do the people around you use at your current job? Now, what if you want to get a programming job? And that's the million dollar question. Before getting too deep into these, let me clear up some misconceptions that might be holding you back. Misconception number one, learning the wrong language is a waste of time. Uh, This is one of my favorites because the truth is is that uh, you, you can't spin your wheels on one language. But the truth is, is that programming is about patterns. Many people think that coding languages are like human languages, where if you pick the wrong one, you're wasting your time, like learning Chinese when you want to move to Germany. That's not really the case with programming. You see, programming languages might look different on the surface, but they usually have a lot in common, and in part that's because they have some shared ancestry. All programming languages are trying to be efficient. They're all trying to cause as few bugs as possible, and they're all trying to execute the same set of instructions. You start to see the same patterns and structures. It's easier to pick up others because they're all using similar concepts. These all might look very different to you now, but they have a lot more in common than it seems. If you know what you want to do, and you know the key coding concepts, then writing a program is largely a matter of syntax, how that concept is written in a particular language. So unlike most human languages, once you learn one, you start seeing the same patterns and structures. And once you pick up one, it's easier to pick others up. Once you have some foundational knowledge, like you can get from any free Code Academy course, you'll be able to make better, more informed decisions later. If you only remember one thing from this video, this is it. When you're just starting out, don't worry about focusing on if you're learning the best language. Instead, focus on learning the concepts and the proper form when you're just getting started. Some of my students have spent months and sometimes even halted entire projects because they were trying to research what was the perfect programming language for them. The truth is is that once you get a foundational knowledge, it all becomes so much easier after that. But you have to learn the basics first. And any programming language will do that for you. Misconception number two, programming is about knowing and doing. Now, as a caveat, it is true that you do have to memorize some stuff, but the truth is, is that programming is primarily about learning. It's easy to see developers who know more than you and think they have it all memorized. The truth is is that we rarely know what's happening when we start. One way to look at it is like we're professional Googlers, but I like to look at it like we're professional learners. We're curious, we poke, we prod, we test. Sometimes we can figure things out from experience because we've solved them from before. However, the better a programmer you get, the more likely you are to be asked to solve problems you've never solved before. And this is especially true when code breaks. We often don't know why it's broken, so most times programming is about learning why it broke and learning how to solve it. The most senior developers I've worked with, the ones I felt the most knowledgeable, will often be the first to admit they don't know what's happening or what's wrong, but they're so confident in their abilities to figure it out that it seems like they knew all along. It's not uncommon for a developer to stride between languages and technologies throughout their careers as both the challenges they face and the way we program software changes. Misconception number three, there is a correct way to learn programming. Now, to be clear, there are plenty of ways that you can learn programming, and some are going to be more helpful than others. Uh, But the truth is that there are mistakes to learn from. An expert programmer is someone who has learned all the mistakes in their field. There are some universal truths in our field, and there are a lot of bad ways to write software and to learn to program. When you're just starting out, it's kind of all the same to you. Learning to program and write good code takes time, but it also takes a lot of hard lessons. 
For example, you'll hear it echoed from everywhere that you shouldn't repeat yourself when you write code, but that won't mean something to you until you've had to run around to 20 different files every time something needs to be updated. Correct ways to learn to program are presented as correct because well-intentioned curricula is trying to save you from making the same mistakes as previous developers, but sometimes those lessons can really only be learned from experience. Put another way, programming is not about knowing what good code is, but why is it good code? Misconception number four, programming languages are about programming. And what I mean by that is that it's just cranking out lines of code. Truth is, is that programming is about solving problems. Underneath this is the basic problem that a lot of new learners struggle with, and I certainly was in that camp, Picking a programming language without a problem is like going shopping for ingredients without a recipe. You can buy a bunch of hypothetical ingredients, but unless you know what you're making, you might not have the stuff you need. Instead, I recommend that learners start with a problem that they're trying to solve or something that they're trying to do first, and then learn what popular frameworks and languages have been written or made to suit that specific challenge. I'm saying it's more helpful to start with a problem first than it is to start with a programming language. If you don't know what you're trying to solve and you just want to learn programming, then it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Okay, now, so for applying the skills to your job, this is a bigger one. Programming is useful for many people in many different ways. It's a big topic, but for the majority of people, if you're trying to use code at work, it's usually in one of the following categories. To analyze data, to automate tasks, or to understand how technology works at your company. And every company is different, but more or less now we're at a stage where every company is a tech company. For analyzing data, it matters how your data is stored and how it's used at work. Accessing that data is often done with SQL. Then to analyze and visualize, you have some options, but the big players in this space are Python and the R programming language. For automation, it depends on what kind of task you're trying to automate and where, but you won't go too far wrong by starting with any of the major programming languages. Lots of people like to start in either Ruby, JavaScript, or Python when writing these kinds of apps. For understanding tech at your company, and really for all of these, keep in mind it matters what these technologies are used for in the office. Some companies use outdated programming languages like Fortran, but programming languages solve problems, so a company's technology will likely reflect the kinds of solutions those technologies offered relative to what the company was facing at that time. That's important to keep in mind when you're looking at what languages different companies can use. For example, when Mark Zuckerberg was in his dorm room coming up with the first version of Facebook, he didn't worry about what would be perfect, but what suited him at the time. As Facebook grew, they had the chance to change and adapt to their needs. When it comes down to it, Customers, investors, and employers don't care so much about what your product was built on. What matters to them is that the software works. That's one of the reasons why what you might need to learn might not be what's popular and trending at all. If you want to learn how to program an ATM, you'll need to learn older, lower level programming languages like COBOL, which hasn't been popular in decades, but is still used in 70% of global financial transactions. Games are basically just a specific type of program. So you can make a game in virtually any language, but the split seconds of extra speed at the lower level can make a big difference. For mobile apps or native apps on any device, you'll need to learn at least a little of the specific languages used for that device's operating system. But you may not need to learn tons. For example, these days you can make apps on pretty much anything using mainly JavaScript. There's tons of nuance to this topic, pros and cons and near infinite ways to write code, but don't pay too much attention to the endless discussion about what a best language or what's trending. The best pick for any task is usually just to code in whichever language you are most comfortable. For everyone with a career focusing on coding, I also like to add one piece of top advice. Think about what sorts of jobs you'd like to have at the end of the day at these companies. Companies will literally tell you what they're looking for for those positions, and they'll also always be up to date. So it's just a list of everything that you need to learn if you want to work at a company like that. Consider keeping an eye on not just entry-level jobs, but the more senior ones too, so you can map out what you're going to need to learn later. This applies to marketers, product managers, and the whole range of tech careers, but especially for developers. Don't worry, even if what you want to learn is really complicated or not very popular, it's more than okay to start with smaller goals in easier, more popular, or higher level languages before switching to a harder one later. Woo, 
Ooh, this is a huge topic, and thanks for sticking with me. There's a lot that can still be discussed about this, so let's do just that. Head over to the web forums so that we can continue the discussion there. I'll see you next time.